Okay. Good evening, everyone. And welcome to this session. This is part of the series of uh, Women in Construction. And uh, in today's session, we are going to consider the um, graduate employment. Our focus will be on issues that are faced by women in construction. But uh, of course, as graduate employment as a topic, it covers um, a number of areas that will uh, also affect male and female uh, students. Um, so I think most of you know Aegis. So we are the School of Energy, Geosciences, Infrastructure and Society. Um, you would be familiar with our uh, undergraduate and postgraduate programs. I'm sure you are. Uh, so we cover pretty much the full spectrum of construction. So we have architecture, architectural engineering, civil engineering at undergraduate level. And at postgraduate, we have construction management, quantity surveying, civil engineering, uh, real estate petroleum engineering. And we also have PhD and engineering doctorates covering all these areas. So as a school, uh, we consider ourselves pretty much uh, multidisciplinary. Um, and this is why the issue of women in construction and graduate employment is something that is very important for us. Um, Elaine, can you go to the... Uh, part of our school is the Center of Excellence in Smart Construction. And uh, the center partners with government industry uh, and of course, it's coming from academia to bring together these three bodies to address um, issues related to performance, productivity, sustainability, well-being, um, and broader issues that are concerning the construction uh, industry. So it, it is a hub that is bringing together these parties uh, to look at these issues. So SESC is part of our school uh, and part of Aegis. Next, please, Elaine. So today I would like to welcome our participants or our panelists. Um, and our panelists, we are proud that they are all our alumni and uh, we have asked them and they have kindly accepted to come and share their experience as recent graduates who have been very successful in finding uh, employment very quickly, sometimes before they have graduated. And so our purpose today is to look at their experience, reflect on it, and also consider the challenges and consider the skills and consider how um, our finalists, so year four students and even year three, um, and what students need to consider and look at, at uh, while they are seeking employment. So as a school, as Aegis, um, women in construction is a theme that we consider in many areas. Um, it is very important for us that our female students find equal opportunities when they graduate. This is something that is central to um, our school. And therefore we want to make sure that we have in place the systems that we support students uh, and that students, once they complete uh, they have full awareness of the issues that they need to be aware of. Um, and therefore this helps them in their journey in seeking uh, employment. You may be uh, aware already that uh, women in construction, the statistics are not great in terms of gender balance. Um, we are aware also that many females, once they graduate, they do not join the industry or they go and join other industries and they find a, a lack of opportunities. However, we also know that our students are very well trained and prepared and therefore they should have full opportunity to join the industry. So this issue is central to what we do in the school. Um, I think we can start then to invite our panelists. But before that, I would like to welcome everybody to this session. I am sure that you will find it extremely useful. Um, you can participate to the discussion by typing your questions in the chat. <coughs> um, and um, 
I will uh, put them forward to the panelists to answer uh, during the Q&A session. So we will start with each of our panelists telling us about their experience. Um, we will then have an opportunity for questions and answers. We will then move on to an activity about skills that are required in the construction industry. And at the end of this uh, session or workshop, we will be talking about women empowerment and uh, Lindsay Thompson will be joining us for that. So without any delay, can I ask everyone to make sure that their uh, microphones are off? I would also like to inform you that this session in, is being recorded. Uh, and um, can we start changing the screen, Elaine, please? Okay, so um, I will ask each of our uh, panelists in turn. And uh, Inas, would you like to go first, please? Sure. Thank you so much, Dr. Hodger, uh, for this introduction. So good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Inas Kamel. I graduated last year uh, with a Bachelor of Engineering in Civil Engineering from Heritage University. Um, and I'm currently a graduate transport planner at Jacobs. Um, I'll just walk you through my journey so far. So I chose civil engineering um, out of interest of how you'd have like a an empty piece of land and you have an idea and then through the technical side of the engineering side you would develop that to become a building or a road that would enhance someone's quality of life and people would make use of it and that was how I just I chose my course um, and through after my I, I was very lucky during my studies to have the opportunity to intern um, actually one of my first internships was uh, sponsored by the university uh, it was a training uh, internship at the Arab Center of Engineering uh, Studies, where I got exposure to how um, construction material is being tested. Um, I also got the opportunity to intern the same summer uh, of 2019, uh, if I remember correctly, yes, um, at Oricon as a transport planner. And the inspiration behind me choosing transport planning was actually um, a course called Transportation Engineering A, which was uh, taught by Dr. Wendu in my third year. And I it just shifted my idea from structures a bit to, oh, this is something that's also very interesting. And I like, uh, I'd like to learn more about it. So I went, when I went to Oricon, I uh, asked if I could um, intern as a transfer planner. And I realized it's a very nice field. And I think uh, that was the start of my passion for this field. Um, shortly after I graduated, or actually let me step, maybe a step back to, my final year project to get more exposure of transportation engineering. Um, I chose my uh, dissertation to also be in highways just to get some more uh, within the scope of my study, some more exposure to the field. And then after that, I shifted a bit more to geotechnical engineering where I interned at Keller uh, after my graduation for two months. And it was a great experience because I got to understand the basis of civil engineering because most of the stuff that we do is on the ground and it's also, it's very beneficial to know the foundations of it. Um, and then shortly after that, I joined Jacobs, again, as a graduate trans transfer planner, pursuing the field that I was very passionate about. And I'm very happy that I, every day I'm learning something new and exploring um, how that field is really where I see myself and where I wanna pursue a career. Thanks Inas, that's great. Um, uh, I'll move on to Suvarna, please. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Suvarna Sankumar, and I am a recent graduate from Airport University with a bachelor's degree in architectural engineering. So I graduated this June. And right after that, by July, I got an internship with Majula for Time as a sustainability intern. So that experience, that was my first ever internship. So going back in the university phase, I did try for many internships, but sometimes it clashes with your academic period or there were many issues that came in. So I thought, why not just change my focus rather than getting experience from internship? Why don't I just get it from competitions or writing paper? So I shifted my focus from internships to participating in huge competitions like with SIPC as well as with uh, Abu Dhabi University. And I also focused 
in uh, shaping myself with the uh, leadership skills to becoming a school officer of architecture engineering and civil engineering. So university life, respect like separate or uh, different from the other panelists from here. I just focus more on getting or shaping myself through competitions. And then upon graduation, I did my first ever internship uh, with the Master of them. And that was a very different experience because I really got exposed to uh, the built environment and everything that was very theoretical in the university life started becoming, falling into places. So I really enjoyed that. And then to just to try a different field, I joined International Advisory Group as an associate consultant. And they basically deal with the government entities here in UAE, and they advise on both sustainable as well as non-sustainable uh, uh, solutions and issues. Uh, so that was a very new step for me because we had to deal with uh, topics that was outside sustainability as well. So it was more as testing myself and the capabilities I could do. So, and keeping the work thing aside, I am also a part of the expo team that will be presenting the Expo Funded Project in the Good Place Pavilion during the Golden Jubilee Week in Expo 2020 Dubai. So, and also, yes, that's the short sort of experience I have got. That sounds great, Sovarna. And so uh, I can already seeing, uh, I can already start seeing different experiences from in terms of internships, projects, competitions, and other things that, that students can use in order to build their CV and, and gain different skills uh, and so on. But of course, we'll have an opportunity to speak more in detail about that. Um, if I can uh, move on to Pooja, please. Sure, thank you, Dr. Hajir. And thanks Inas and Suwarna for your really inspiring stories. Um, hi everyone, I'm Pooja Ganatra and I'm working as an acoustic consultant at WSP in the Middle East. So I graduated last year um, in 2020 during the pandemic and uh, managed to kind of continue working while studying as well at the same time. But let's go back to first year of university, 2016, when I started off um, with the architectural engineering course. And towards the end of my first year, I was lucky enough, I would say, because I just ended up going to this guest lecture, uh, which was related to acoustics and ended up getting uh, interested in acoustics, which was a very new field to me. And post that, I sort of went in and asked them for an internship, which I got through with uh, WSP Acoustics um, in the Dubai office itself. And so I started interning during my summer months in my after my first year through my second year as well so when I started my second year course in the, the summer break I interned with them as well and then in my third year I sort of tried to get more of a mix because architectural engineering is more of building services engineering it's sort of in simple words it's like giving life to a building so it's not just you know, your MEP or ducting and what's going on within the building but it's also sort of adding acoustics and lighting and making it what it is in essentially. So looking at intelligent buildings and sustainable systems and just kind of understanding what else I could do with this degree. Um, but then I was always dragged behind and saying, uh, just considering acoustics and how you don't notice if a place is bad in terms of the acoustics until it is actually, you know, when you actually hear it. Um, and the, your ears are the most sensitive senses of your body as well, because it has 20,000 more connections than your eyes to your brain, which means that in terms of sensitivity, if it's a bad space in terms of the noise aspect, it could actually affect your well-being, your mental health and, and how you perceive a space. So I was very attracted to that aspect of it. And then during my internships, I sort of realized that every year I was picking something up from the other departments as well, but I was always associating it with how it could improve the well-being of the occupants within the space that we're designing. So that was sort of my focus area. And then eventually, even in my fourth year, I sort of focused my dissertation around improving the acoustics and indoor air quality of a school in Dubai. So going down to the school, doing qualitative and quantitative analysis, and then understanding how we could improve the quality of life and improve the way students are learning in the environment. And acoustics is a very, very important factor because speech intelligibility plays an important role in these things. So this is something that I considered. And then when I got into my fourth year, which was the final year, I was 
um, offered the job as a full-time graduate consultant at WSP uh, with the acoustic team. And I took that forward and it, it was a very difficult challenge in a way to kind of manage 45 hours of work and sort of balancing my degree as well at the same time, because final year is a very crucial year of your lives and you need to give it your 100%. But it was, it was a great experience kind of learning and then applying that knowledge um, at the same time and getting that support from the professors and the people at WSP throughout the course. And then just growing through that, um, I also finished an, a diploma in acoustics right after my graduation in architectural engineering uh, from uh, Trinity College in Dublin. And then it's just been, you know, going forward from there. And now here we are just discussing how we've kind of come through. And I think it's quite interesting to reflect back on this and look at, you know, where you started at and how it, it really kind of helps you progress um, in the best possible way. Thank you. Thanks, Pooja. That's that's really um, inspiring as as the other um, examples we have heard. So again, we see something different. You have started very early uh, to to think, and maybe you think it was by chance, but I think it's by design as well. <laughs> so we will look at it in this way. So thanks for that. Uh, can I move on to Zoya? Hello everyone, I'm Zoya Hoda and I come from the architecture department. Um, unlike Pooja, I didn't have anything to begin right up in first year, so it's not always the case for everyone. But um, our professors always organize this uh, competitions with day three, which really helped in the design progress. So it's always a good way to showcase your design, to showcase the talent and build those like small, it's like building blocks, which starts off in year one. And those small projects actually lead up to something very big. So it's important that you kind of uh, accumulate those qualities right from the beginning. And um, currently I graduated in uh, June, just like Suvarna. And I was lucky enough to find an internship with RMJM in July. And after my internship of three months, I was offered a full-time position as a junior architect. Um, so I've been lucky enough to have the same company and work with them. The fact that uh, attracts me to working with them is the way they work, the environment, they're taking up competition, always um, giving in new ideas, which is something I personally also believe in because for me, it's learning always and every day. So even when I was in university, uh, during a breaks, when I didn't do any internships, I made sure that I acquired new skills whether it was in software or going and attending workshops, because these help you because you're at home and um, you want to learn because everything is new every day. So this is like, if you're not finding an internship does not mean that that's the only way to gain experience, but there are many other sources that can help you. And um, yes, that's been my journey so far. Great, thanks for that, um, Zoya. And uh, I see the theme of internships coming out quite strongly uh, in this group. So probably we will dedicate some time to speak um, about this issue. Um, our last panelist is uh, Khushbu. So Khushbu, can you come in and share with us your experience? Hi, everyone. So I am a graduate of architecture engineering, just like Suwarna. I've graduated this June, so I actually uh, starting with first year and second year. I have I actually used to find internship with small firms, uh, so that I can it, although they are unpaid, they give a lot of exposure and experience, so that I get to learn new things before moving on to the next year. So I've done quite a few internships during my second year and third year. Uh, coming on to fourth year, um, uh, as soon as I graduated, I got a sustainability internship with Rambol. It was an amazing experience for three years. It gave a lot of insight into the industry, how things work, um, software knowledge, uh, the productivity you have to maintain, the consistency you need to have. And after completing three years, I have actually started my internship with a different role and a different firm. NG solutions. Uh, it's for energy auditing. It's a very new topic for me and it's a great experience being on site, uh, meeting the FM teams, interacting with them. It's a lot of exposure and 
a direct insight into the industry. So yeah, that's been my experience so far. Fantastic. So thank you all for uh, sharing your experience and giving us a, a bit of a background. Um, I'm going to ask a few questions um, and I will just remind the, all our participants that they can post their questions on the chat if they have any. Um, I, I will start with Inas and I, because you are from a civil engineering background and I just want you to reflect on whether at any point you felt that as a female, uh, we know that civil engineering in particular, there is a general perception, let's say, that it's a male dominated uh, part of the industry. Has this ever come across your mind? And did you feel at any point that being a female might be a barrier or did you see anything in your experience with the industry that indicates this might be an issue? Um, yeah, so I mean, when I started, before I, before I started my studies, when I was in school and I came to my family and I was a, told them I want to study civil engineering, uh, they said, well, great choice, go ahead. They didn't bring up anything about, you know, you're a girl, it's going to be difficult or no, think of something easier because um, the work field is difficult. They didn't say that. So I, I was very lucky to have a very supportive family uh, uh, beside me that pushed me forward. And like I said, um, I was inspired by the idea and I wanted to know how things are being done, how they're being built and the effect it has on people's life and how I could contribute to that. So that was my aim. Um, now, of course, like you said, Dr. Roger, there have, I've uh, got people who've told me to my face, why civil engineering? It's, you're never gonna get a job. Uh, the ratio of female to male engineers is, is very, the female engineers are barely there. They're not even, um, seen, you're not, you're never going to get anywhere. And well, I was like, okay, um, that, at the end of the day, it's their opinion, but I had an aim and I focused on building my skills and, uh, to achieve that aim. So I think despite what people would say, or despite the, the statistics, if it's something that you see yourself or something that you're passionate about, um, uh, you need to continue working towards it and don't listen to anyone else. Um, and I feel like this is something that is very important that we start um, telling to younger uh, females. So even from school level, you need to continue doing what you want to do, what you love. Uh, if it's something that you feel you're going to uh, excel in in the future, pursue it despite um, others saying otherwise. Um, and I think having this conversation and having similar conversations with female um, students in the uh, entry level of university or in school will direct their focus on building capabilities and not really their gender being an obstacle. Absolutely right, Ina. So uh, as I said, there is a perception and we always have to remind ourselves that it is a perception. Uh, from our perspective um, in the school, we do not see any difference between female students and male students. They perform equally well. Sometimes females perform even better. Uh, and so there is absolutely no reason why they cannot go out in industry and excel in whatever they do. So th this is our expectation for sure. Uh, so thanks for that, Inas. Um, Suvarna, maybe I turn to you and a related question in a way, I, I just want to take you back to the time before you graduated when you were thinking of applying for jobs. And what was your mindset? Did you think being female would be a barrier? Were there any concerns from your perspective in terms of um, I will not get a job or I need to, were you looking for something in particular that is affected by your gender or you were not worried about that? Uh, honestly speaking, I wasn't worried about it because of the fact that I was really confident with my CV and the experiences I've got. So I haven't really thought in that way. And maybe because I didn't really know the seriousness of the issue as well until I was in the industry and I started hearing about different stories. But then there's also something I would like to add. In, during my internship with in much of them, I understood the seriousness of these issues and what actually workplace is actually doing in order to fight these issues. So they have uh, policies in place, they have committees, they have task force. So they are taking pretty serious. And nowadays 
workplaces are in this race to create this ideal environment. So they are working towards addressing these issues and giving equal opportunities to women and increasing women's roles in leadership. So I have seen this and I think it's uh, maybe not fully that the fear shouldn't go away, but I think it's time that we start uh, having a positive outlook. And so the st stage is being prepared to have an equal uh, opportunity for female. So it's, it's half the responsibility also lays in us to prepare ourselves in order, in order to make sure that we also have perfect skills and we are ready for this thing. So, yeah. It's, it's great to hear you say that, uh, Suvarna, because I would agree the industry is shifting and um, it's great to see that you had come in contact and become aware that companies are making a lot of effort. And, and, and this message is very important for graduates that there is nothing to stop you. There are lots of companies who are tackling the issues, encouraging more female participation, appreciating that there is a, this, this is a, a fantastic pool of skills and capabilities that cannot be lost and therefore must be encouraged and absorbed into the industry. So, so thanks for that. Uh, Pooja, I will turn to you and, and your experience was different uh, because you started interning very, very early uh, at your time in the university. And I just want you to, to bring about, because you said it was a guest lecture that inspired you um, at the beginning. So can you maybe tell us about things within the university that has helped you and pushed you in that direction? We already you know two things, an internship and a guest lecture. So mm -hmm. if, if you wanted to advise us as a university to say in order to support students to go ahead, what would be the key things you want to tell us to focus on? Right, I think we already have the right kind of support system present in the university right now. In terms of just looking at what skills I picked up in my four years at university, it was not only linked to the fundamentals of mechanical, electrical, plumbing and understanding what we're doing, but also software skills like IES and CFD, computational fluid dynamics, which are very industry, hard industry softwares that we use almost every day as an acoustic or not acoustics per se, but sustainability consultant or someone within MEP. So I think we are kind of looking into those, developing those skills so that you're ready for the consultancy world or engineering world once you graduate into, you know, the jobs that you're looking at. And for your soft skills as well, I remember taking uh, lessons or like courses within the university for communication, effective communication with the learning advisors in our university. I think we have someone called Allison um, who keeps these and I remember taking them through my third year of university if I'm not mistaken and that just helps you develop your presentation skills develop the way you're communicating effectively and we also have the um, student center where you can get your CV developed for yourself and that's how I developed my CV in back in first year when I obviously didn't have a CV ready for myself you know so we already have these in place and I think the students who are within the university should definitely make the most of these um, things that we have around and also our professors I think they're all great every time you knock on their door they're available to help you out with any questions obviously related to your technical growth or provide mentorship in internships and what you should do next and just looking at that uh, we also have a really strong alumni group that we could reach out to I think we've always connected with them and they've come down to sort of assist us or have a jury where we bring them in and then they always stay as stay connected with us to just guide us through our projects and that just gives gives us a much better insight as well. And I've actively been participating in mentorship and you know, mentoring the students as well who are coming to WSP as interns, which again, really kind of keeps that comfort level with Harriet Watt students as interns and someone who's recently graduated working in the same firm, just to provide that kind of comfort and understanding of where they could go and what they could do. So I think everything is present, it's just how well the students are making the use and the most of it essentially. I must say, I'm happy to hear that, so, <laughs> so that's good. Um, I uh, turn to Zoya, and Zoya, you also spoke about university support and you spoke about internships. And I got the impression that you kind of chose certain things to do um, and you were trying to choose different things uh, that will help you later on. Do you think, so we spoke about internships 
quite a bit in, in this conversation and, and I'm getting the sense that this is key and it would be a great start for any student to make sure that they um, take on internships, etc. Can you tell us a little bit more? Do, can you choose? And during your internships, were you given full opportunities or did you feel? Because if we look at statistics, possibly not us and not within our university, disciplines vary, but we do hear that female students are not always given the best opportunities in terms of internships and sometimes they are given desk work or admin work rather than, you know, putting their hands into the dirty work, let's say, and this is left for the boys. Um, so two things, was this ever your experience and to what extent were you able to select what you wanted to do and what kind of support would you need to make sure your internship is very valuable in, in the future? Um, to answer your first question, whether the females were given equal opportunity, I come from a cohort that started off with 36 students, out of which only four were male and 32 were female. So if you see for our cohort, we did not have even an equal ratio for female or male. So we were more, uh, it just enabled us more to be in the faces with everyone and take up, grab any opportunity that the professors presented or the guest lectures that came in and we discussed with them. So we were more always as front faces and uh, the males at this time were a little behind because they were in minority. Um, apart from that, for the second question, um, I would say yes, internships are just as important and they give you the right kind of experience and if given the chance, we flourish just as well, but it's not always necessary, like I mentioned, that internships is the only way to get this because our professors have always been, whether it's any year, so from the beginning of year one, we started off with projects that were large scale and were presented in front of a much larger crowd where people come from outside to visit it. So it's not always that an internship will give you the same kind of experience, but if you connect, collaborate with people outside uh, with workshops, with guest lectures, like Pooja mentioned, they give you the same kind of, uh, opportunity and you get a different kind of skill set. Uh, you get a lot of soft skills from the work that you do there rather than because hard skills are very efficient. The university has always been very efficient to teach us those. So when we get out in the market, we know what's coming our way and we are prepared for it. So I, I'm actually very thankful for the university to always have been like providing us with these kind of uh, experiences. And every year we had an extra course, which was not part of a course, but um, a lecturer always came in to teach us these hard skills. So I would say, yes, we graduated with a much higher set of softwares that are currently in use uh, with the industry. So, yeah. Uh, I think it brings to mind the relationship between university and industry. I'm bringing this in earlier. So all of you spoke about um, skills, which is our next stop actually. But uh, before that, I just wanted Khushbu to give us a, a bit of a perspective because you have been interning uh, for some time and uh, you had a good experience with it. Um, and you worked with different companies. Has it been difficult finding these opportunities or how did you manage to find all these diverse experiences that kind of expose you uh, across the board? Uh, no, I think I, I didn't face any difficulty finding internship opportunities. In fact, I found a lot of them. And there were times where I had to choose between the two uh, with like two competitive firms. I really had to make a tough choice on that. So I think, yes, uh, I didn't face any difficulties. And um, with the skills that our university teaches us and the CV I had built, I think it was quite easy. The pandemic did uh, make it a bit tough because I remember losing an internship with Chamber of Commerce just one week before the pandemic started and we were asked not to come. So oh. that was, yeah, that was a bit sad. Yeah. And, and is it through the university always or did you pursue your own? Did you just contact uh, companies that you think they do the kind of thing I'm looking for and they, they have the experience I'm searching for or was it always through the university? 
Uh, no, it wasn't always with university. The one which I uh, did recently after graduating with Rambol was through one of our professors, Professor Junhan. But the yeah. others, I think I always found it online or on um, yeah. social media like LinkedIn. Oh, so that's fantastic. Okay, so so students have a lot of avenues to find uh, and, and there is no, they have the skills, to, they should have the, comf the confidence to contact these companies and see if there are opportunities. So it, it's, it's a very good takeaway uh, from this discussion. Um, thank you all for answering these questions. I will just give an opportunity for uh, participants if there are any questions that they would like uh, to ask. And uh, Lindsay, if you want to say anything while yes, we wait. I, sure, I hope you can hear me and, and give me a thumbs up or, you know, um, with it. That's great. Thank you. Um, I hope the traffic, I've been caught out in my plan. So I'm on the side of the 611, unfortunately. Um, but I would like to just mention what a vast array of talent, experience, uh, thought-provoking comments that you've given today that I would say I'm quite proud to be at Harriet Watt as a staff member, not only because I know, you know, some of you quite personally, but also because uh, I taught you all, but because you've given insight into all the different facets of the university, and that's exactly what we've intended to do. And we were reflecting back on for all the students that are on the call to think, oh, what can I do? And I'm very glad that they will have a, a good selection of comments from yourself that, that, that may tie to the type of person that, that these students are that are on the call or their type of experience and think, oh, uh, this is interesting. And so I'd like to just say thank you very much because there will be one element that, that they can take away from, from all of, each of you that, that's really going to hit home and think, how can I progress and, and graduate and, and what, how will I do it and what are the tips to take on board? So that is fantastic. Um, I'm going to just, if I may, Hadjar, um, ask all of you for a little exercise um, for each of you on the panel, and it's very small, and, and for those that are watching and, and uh, Skype, um, logging into the Zoom call live. For all of you on the panelists, I want to ask to think of five personal skills that you would say is important and what you would say is you, you realise on the people that you work with, the, there could be recent graduates, there could be senior staff that you work alongside. But overall, what are the five key personal skills that you say are important in the world of work right now? And I'm going to ask exactly the same question directed to the students that are on the call. And I want to ask those students, what, what, what skills and what personal skills do you think the industry is looking for? And I'll give everyone a, a few minutes of silence um, to think about them. And we're going to do a little match. And once, if I may, if you, for those that are listening in, if you can place them in the chat, that would be brilliant and just number them. And I've got a a small, uh, a couple of slides later as well to talk about uh, women empowerment slides and principles that, that we'd like to talk about in this in this chat. So we'll give a, a just a silence to to think or write them down, and I'll try my best as well to think about them. And if anybody wants to put theirs on the chat, they are welcome to do so. I'm going to write mine down in the chat. That will encourage maybe others to think. You can you hear me type? It's okay.
I'm on my fourth. I can't see the ones you are typing. I've not, I've not pressed yeah. send oh, yet. Okay. <laughs> so I've funny. got my five. How is everyone else doing? Do you have five? I have someone who put in five. Okay. Uh, are you using the Q&A? Yes. Okay, I'll do it in the yeah. Q&A. Oh, yeah. communication. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. I'll give everyone a few more minutes, one more minute, and then we'll reveal what we all think and we'll have a little chat about that and reflect on it. Okay, so I will also post it in the Q and A. That's what we're going to do. So I don't think I can post in the Q and A because I'm a panelist. So I have put it in the chat. So you can maybe open both of your of your uh, of your boxes now. What? What did the panelists think, if I can ask? Can you, can you resonate with any of the, the, the skills that you think? Are there any that match? So from, from those that are online, we've got communication. So that's obviously a key. We've got creativity, collaboration, leadership, and technical skills. And so we've got communication from, I'm not gonna review mine, but I think we'll, we'll pull it up as a little bit of a discussion. First of all, um, for those on the panel, um, do you relate to any of these? Does anyone have a comment that they wish to, to talk about any of these? Um, first, because that's coming from the students. Does anyone wish to pick that up? I guess I'll, I'll go, Lindsay. Yeah. So um, communication, for sure, I completely agree. Whether it's verbal or your written uh, communication skills, uh, they need to you need to start working on them in university. And th there's so much opportunity. Personally, from my experience, I was uh, someone who struggled with public speaking. Um, so I hated giving a presentation, but we had so many presentations during our course and uh, numerous uh, presentations from these were um, presented in front of people from the industry. So it was a valuable uh, time to get feedback from the industry professionals. And I think uh, working on your communication skills, putting your hand up and going ahead, even though you're frightened from giving a presentation is going to give you that practice. And you're still in an environment that is kind of safe and you, because you know your colleagues, you know your classmates, your professors, it's okay to say something that is not completely correct during a presentation. It's okay to stutter and be nervous. You're practicing. And the more you put yourself out there, um, you'll evolve and you'll improve on it. So communication skills for sure. And specifically also your written skills. So besides technical report writing, for example, um, your written skills, whether it's an email communication or when um, you're sending a message on LinkedIn to someone, for example, you need to start practicing these and working on them, getting feedback from your professors, getting feedback from colleagues and see how you could improve it. So I completely agree with communication. Thank you very much, Nas. That's, that, that's great. Anyone else pick up any points from that list or from, from, oh, we have a few now I see that's coming in the chat if you open up. So we've got the, the Q&A box and the chat box as well, um, which we do see communication again, networking, always learning and again I resonate with that in terms of being curious and continually wanting to have a growth mindset is is is, is good to see um, can anyone comment about the growth does this resonate with each of you do you think you all possess this this um 
attribute or this skill about always wanting to improve. I remember, Pooja, when you were talking in your, your discussion about jumping from different departments, and I remember WSP encouraging you to do that. So that was fantastic. But you were equally eager to learn and understand that would then enhance the, the direction in the company that you took. Um, could you perhaps give comment about this eagerness to, 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 to improve or the eagerness of skill and uh, skill growth and perhaps give a message to, to students that are in a maybe a younger years just preparing their self or is that an untapped skill that they feel is not important perhaps? Yeah, for sure. I think there's this one uh, phrase that someone at work told me about aspiration and ambition. And it's one thing to just aspire for something. You can aspire to just be at the top of the moon, but there's one thing to be ambitious about something and be after it and actually achieve something in life. And I think that's something that you need to be looking at. And having that kind of thirst for knowledge is also very important, especially in your early career years, because that's when you're kind of just framing yourself up to just be someone that you, you as your younger self would be proud of or look up to say, okay, this is something that I've really done well in. And I think the whole conversation about Miss Lindsay that you spoke about how I've kind of looked at different disciplines and looked at how I want to sort of tap into them before I look at just acoustics and narrow it down. It was the conversation that I had to drive within the company. It was not something that, okay, we will, you know, have you go around and you can just get a taste of the disciplines. It was something that I wanted to drive for myself. And I used to sit down with the team and sort of look at how I can get that sort of knowledge because I'm looking at my courses in year three and I'm getting HRAC calculations to be to be doing like I'll be doing more of HRAC calculations and more technical things so why can't I just assist building services this summer so when I go back to university I have a lot more knowledge and background as to what I'll be learning in the next year and then there was a course on fire as well where we touched on fire life and safety and then I was just assisting the fire team on site looking at ground engineering and soil formations and foundations and just tapping into all the disciplines because you just don't want to know one discipline and and be content with it you could know about bits about everything and be a master of one completely but know about all the other disciplines and what they're up to so tomorrow if you're in a client call and someone asks a question about say you know sustainability and how that impacts acoustics or just anything in general you would know something and have an idea of how to kind of lead that conversation if you're not it's not that you have to be the best at it, but just having that idea and that background really helps you out. And, and that just goes back to having that thirst for hunger uh, and for knowledge and that hunger to just grow and keep looking at the avenues and what's new and just looking at sort of uh, growing. So yeah, this is something that everybody should, you know, really look into and focus on gaining. And I think one of that's fantastic comments, Pooja, and I suppose as well, the environment that you're in and, w, you know, everyone seems to think I'll, I'll get a job and that company, I've got that job because of the skills, et cetera, of who I am. Yeah. But the, the, the company as well, you've got to both grow together and they Absolutely, are pulling yeah. you in to that company because they can see that you've got that skill to want to grow with them. Um, and it's yep. fine the amount as well that you'll that you'll learn and I think perhaps some students on the verge of migrating over into professional life have that pinnacle of thinking oh well you know I've got these skills and you know uh, I'm not going to grow anymore but as you say it's an important skill to always continue to do that and and it's the right companies as well um, that also see that and that's important we'll we'll come and chat to that so here's me getting excited thinking that people from the, from the chat have started to, to uh, put in but I realize it's comments from from all the panelists however what does everyone think you can jump to now reviewing them more it's interesting that we've done this and everyone's picked relatively um, very closely I would say where we've got co-working and um, co-working as part of a team from those of you that I know on this call, you're working for, for large corporations that are international focus as well, that need the benefit of communication. And I think that's definitely key 
Um, and, and what we hope to at university instill in some of these cross-campus collaborative projects and um, collaborative timelines and collaborative uh, workflows. So that's good. Um, would anyone else like to pick up and think, oh, I, you know, the, or, or enhance some, some points that, that perhaps you've made and direct a comment back to, to students that are on the call, perhaps? Um, or even can I, can I just add, yeah. I mean, if we had to, if, if, if you guys had to advise uh, students who are attending this call to add these skills in their CV to stand out uh, to companies when they are selecting, what would be the key ones that you want to tell them these must be there and, and companies really like to know that you are capable of having these particular skills? Uh, I would like to add to that. I think the two common, two uncommon ones, even even I don't think even I have added those to my CV, but I think over the internship and opportunities I've got, I've realized is one is flexibility and one is creativity. So flexibility is when once we start doing an internship, it's not, you're not going to do one task for a very long time. You're going to get these different sort of tasks coming in. So they want you to really shift your focus really fast and they want you to get done with the work really fast. So flexibility is one of them and creativity is whenever we get a task, they expect you to do it in a different way. So what I try to do is I always try to put in a spark for myself so that when they review the work, they know that, okay, she has done something different. So even if it's with a simple presentation, we are suggesting maybe a solution to the company. There should be, even in the presentation we make, it should be something, there should be a spark from your side so that's what I define creativity as. So I think these are the two common, uncommon ones I've seen and the ones I'm, I think I'm going to add as well to my CV. So, yeah. That's brilliant. And, and thank you very much. It will be interesting in another sequence or, or another session that we hope to run in, in the future. And we get companies as well that uh, from perhaps the HR department and we get um, further uh, enhancement of some of the ideas that, that perhaps students feel, are they aligned? Are they not aligned? And I think that would be good. And I really hope we can invite you back to something um, that we could hold next year because I, I really think this exercise, this, this discussion is fantastic. And so thank you very much. Hadjar, I'm just looking at the time. How are we for continuing on to talk about UN? Do we feel that we can jump to that just now or? Yeah, I think we're okay with time. We are quite fine. Um, okay. I'm just looking now at any things on the Q&A and um, uh, we have some skills from Dua, and we said earlier also uh, a point about communication. Uh, we have another one, um, similar point to Ms. Ganatra, look into horizontal growth rather than vertical growth only. Experience takes time, be patient. Um, so yeah, that's, that's very good advice um, as well. Uh, we're doing well for time. Um, I will remind the uh, audience if they have any comments or questions to put them. Uh, but Lindsay, if you want to move on to the uh, next session, so you can go ahead and start. That's good. So I've got just a couple of slides and um, again, feel free panelists to jump in and, and, and discuss or, or raise any experience that you've come across, whether it's negative or positive. And uh, I know, Savarna, you were very clear there when you talked about coming to Majid Alpha Thames, um, that you were very taken aback and, and equally surprised at how progressive they are in women's role and in, in gender diversity and gender equality. Um, so I'm going to share a slide and I'm going to just share it. Um, you should be able to see my screen. I was gonna yeah. use this for the little chat, but I'm going to show about the women empowerment principles. Now at university, I, for, for those that are perhaps on the call and inside um, some cohorts, the women empowerment principles are extremely important. And through all the industry engagement that we do, this is an overriding factor of how critical did they take on board gender equality 
in their own practice. And so I'd like to, to let the students be aware is that we're trying to do this, which will then even some of the challenges that they may face coming into the uh, professional life. So for example, if you're in year two or year three and you have a lecture, then we, us as a university are doing our best to pull that company in that share the same values as what we do as a global entity and a global education institution. Um, however, in industry, if you're looking for internships around second year or third year, you may come across companies that may offer um, you know, unpaid internships and may not have even heard of what these women empowerment principles are by the UN or even be aware of the sustainability goals or and in particular goal number five, which is the gender equality um, goal, which is important. And we would like to use this time for everyone that's listening or everyone that listens back to the recording is to please be aware and look out and in your lists that you are writing up thinking these are the companies that I'm going to to um, approach for internship or for a graduate position just have a look if you can on their website or their corporate um, paraphernalia or marketing statements and I would advise that you that you aim to filter through the companies and approach directly those that do uphold these values. After all, this uh, women in construction is trying to do that at university and try and instill that that way of thinking, because that is expected. And as we know that there is a big shift in the industry, but it's to also be aware that when you are looking for a job, it's very easy. And by the way, um, Kushbu, I'm delighted to hear that you had multiple offers and that you needed to that you were in a situation where the, that you did have to turn things down. That's brilliant, but. Um, maybe not all of the students in, in either the months or years to come may be in that situation. However, if you are deciding between two companies, what makes you decide on them? Um, and I think um, to try and instill the importance behind um, gender equality in their business, um, as we have Pooja from WSP, that we know WPS very well, and they do uphold um, hence why you're, you're working with them. You have written a piece or it's on their website about gender equality. Um, and that's fantastic to hear. And, and I would promote that. And so if anyone else would have any comments about um, coming up against companies or working for some companies that, that, that you were shocked that they weren't fully supportive of perhaps the women empowerment principles within their corporate strategy, um, or at least had not heard about it. I'm just curious to know. Um, but overall, the little hints that we give today could do a lot for students that are on their journey into professional career. So I would open this up um, to the floor for any comments or, or, or uh, reflections behind companies that either in your experience have upheld these or have not known anything about it. Does anyone have any comments to say? I think just to add to that, Miss Lindsay, about just around how WSP is sort of just pushing women in engineering and empowering the women. Um, they've been elevating the conversation around diversity and that has led to us being named the diversity and inclusive, uh, inclusion champion of the year as well last year because of the way we have our policies. And that is sort of the core within our strategy as well. You know, looking at how we can empower our women and it's not about female engineers or male engineers, it's engineers at the end of the day. It's not your, you know, your gender that plays a, a role at all. So yes, absolutely. I think it is, it should be a crucial part of the corporate strategy, right? like you rightly mentioned, and should be something that's driven within the core values and principles of the organization as well. And I've been really fortunate and lucky to be surrounded by people who do promote this at all times within the business. So yes, absolutely, very important. And it's great to be in such an environment. Um, Savarna, again, your experience, although that you're not with Majid al Fatim, but your experience with them and having um, having that at the forefront. Um, Majid al Fatim, if you follow their, if everyone follows their website and um, their exclusivity 
um, uh, inclusivity, I should say, and their corporate sustainability reports that get published. Um, the SDG 5 is very heavily promoted. Um, for the company that you're in, Suvarna, is that equally so? And um, how do they go about giving gender equality measures to the staff and to their clients? Uh, at the current company, it's very, I would say it's very equivalent, like there are both, uh, there are no such uh, measures of, you know, more female, it's equally balanced. And it's, it's interesting to see that these are the advisors that directly advise to the minister. So there is, it's good to see that there is no such division there and it's all equal and there are equal females and male that advises to the minister. So I don't really see much of diversion there. So it's a great balance. Thank you so much. In us as well at Jacobs, um, again, an international company with um, gender, gender equality at the forefront of what they do and how they appear for, for business. And that's very important. And it's good that we've heard of your own easiness through um, studying civil, civil engineering. And it's really great to hear that you are part of, of Jacobs that we know pushes SDG5 extremely well. Um, do you have any comments about, um, for say the internship program that they perhaps have at Jacobs or their graduate program? Or do you have any comments about how you've been made to feel extremely welcome uh, and some of the activities that, that they perhaps have on the pipeline? For sure. I mean, just as you said, that we are very focused on inclusion and it's actually one of our core values. We, we live inclusion. Um, and it, the company is very diverse, but not everybody um, can reach that level of inclusivity. And I think at Jacobs, they, they did really well with the aims that are there, the support from leadership. It's great. Um, and, and there are so many inspiring and just amazing uh, female leaders around me that I'm working with on a frequent basis. And when you hear their stories and how they were empowered through the company, it's just so amazing. Uh, just knowing their experiences and how they, no one really stopped in their way because they were a female, but they actually empowered them to continue and move forward. Um, and I th across the, uh, the company, we, we have networks that, uh, such as like the Women's Network, where we also uh, enable women to communicate any issues that they might have in the workplace, any suggestions that they might have. But it's not only for women, their male colleagues also contribute because you're trying to get that balance and you're trying to get everybody involved to achieve that goal. And I think at Jacobs, this is something that is at the main focus um, of everything that we do on a daily basis. And it's really great. And maybe I'll just end this with a word of advice for students. When you're looking to apply to a company, go through their website or try to connect with someone from there and see if this is something on their agenda, if it's something in their strategy. It's really important that you, when you're applying, you're actually going to a place that you will be comfortable to express yourself and bring your whole self to work. Thank you very much, Ilnas, from that. Um, there are equally um, progressive measures that have been taken for some time now at Heriot Watt as well, and not just in Dubai, but in all of our campuses globally. And um, we are looking as well, this is one of many events that Hajar and I and, and the team at, at, at Dubai are hoping to promote and link with industry. Um, and I suppose in a way, Hajar, we, we do want to also um, mention that it's work in progress. And I think in having discussions such as this and keeping in contact with you wonderful alumni and through the Watt Club and through our industry guests and our industry network, we can do no wrong other than just progress on this and make it even a stronger awareness. So from my side, I'll pass it back to Hadjar, but thank you very much for that conversation and um, look forward to chatting with you all soon. Thank you so much, Lindsay. Um, and thanks to all of you for uh, participating in that discussion and giving your view. I mean, I, I would just add, in general, I find companies that are aware of the SDGs or promoting SDGs are also aware of not only women in construction or gender balance issues, but 
other softer issues as in supporting students to complete their education or to enhance their skills or to be more understanding and give more flexibility. So it is the kind of work environment where you would want to, to, to be. So certainly this is something to look out for when you are trying um, to find employment. Um, I think uh, I will uh, bring to almost a close, but I just wanted to reflect on all the things that we have uh, discussed and give our panelists an opportunity to come in with final words uh, that they want to put in. But I, I see clear themes coming in. One, uh, if we speak specifically about women, is that there are no barriers whatsoever. We have seen our panelists, our alumni, and as Lindsay says, we are very proud of what they have achieved. All of them are, have found uh, very good opportunities in very good companies. Um, and this is where we will want to see all our students uh, going in the future, and I'm sure we will. Um, so the, 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 the fact that the industry is also moving forward and, and there is quite a big change and, and the shift in terms of uh, gender balance. So we see a lot of awareness uh, from the experience of our panelists and also from the companies we deal with. Um, and I just want to uh, reiterate what Lindsay was saying. As a school, we want to work with these companies that think like us and they want to promote gender balance and they want to achieve it within their uh, organization and within the internships that they invite our students to do and so on. So um, we, the, it's changing in industry just in the last month, exactly one month I have come and, and my discipline is construction management, which is uh, even more uh, even worse, I have to say, <laughs> than other disciplines in terms of gender balance. It is very, very difficult to find uh, female construction managers, but I have come across three companies who were talking to me about gender equality and what they are trying to do in their company to uh, support women and to put more women in senior positions uh, and director positions, etc. So certainly uh, times are changing. Um, I'm very happy to hear what you said about the school and the programs that you have completed, that they're very relevant to industry, that you feel that you have come out very well prepared and supported to start your career. So this hopefully will give other students the confidence that they are ready and that they are in a very strong position when they come out and when they apply for jobs. I was also happy to see many different ways in which you have tried to uh, improve your CVs and to build your skills. Uh, we heard about internships, which seems to be a, a common theme. And I just want to remind students that there are lots of op internship opportunities available. So uh, ask your uh, academic team, speak to the career office. Uh, there are these opportunities, so I, I don't want you to miss them. I also want to... Um, reflect on what all the panelists have said in terms of internships as key. Uh, these can start as early as you want to, and therefore, uh, as soon as you can pursue this, they will help you. They will help build your CV and also your connections. Uh, we have heard about projects. We have heard about dissertations as all contributing to building your portfolio and ensuring that you are prepared and you can apply to companies. We heard about participation in competitions uh, as examples of other things you can do besides uh, internships. So these are not things to ignore. This can be very useful in the future. Even if you are busy during your study time, it will be great to participate. Uh, and in this, we also heard a tiny bit maybe, and maybe in future we will focus on the role of the professional bodies like SIPSI, someone mentioned them specifically, and things like uh, the ICE for civil engineering for us will be the RICS. Uh, and how we can benefit from the relationship with the university, because again, I'm sure all your lecturers will have a relationship, they will be bringing them in, there will be initiatives and competitions and, and, and things to do there that can be extremely useful. So uh, a lot to do. We also looked at the key skills that we want to see on CVs. 
um, like the things that Lindsay has posted and the panelists have also mentioned, your creativity, we spoke about it, your uh, resilience, we spoke about it in many ways, resilience, agility, flexibility, uh, your communication skills, and, and, and these things need to be prominent in your CV. This is what the companies um, are looking for. Um, I have to stop because the time is coming up, but there are a couple of questions. One, uh, and instead of me asking, maybe I will post this to the panelists as final words. To any panelist, how, what do you feel about the current company cultures towards equality, Middle East only? Do you see any change? Do you wish to change? The change comes faster. How can male colleagues help towards equality? I think Inas and Pooja have both reflected on this, but maybe Zoya, you want to tell us your perspective. Um, as far as I think they, there are a lot of companies like we already mentioned that are taking this up as a protocol, as an objective or an aim from the very beginning. And they have already implemented some policies that can help with the same thing. And the change is coming. It is, it's going to be gradual. You cannot expect change to be overnight. So it's a gradual change. However, one thing that I would say personally is um, we should not feel inferior in front of the male colleagues because if you graduate with a skill set, it's the same as your uh, the other student in your batch. So it's just important that your you yourself are that confident and have that ability so you you can stand and um, there, then there is nothing that there's no, going to be no firm that's going to say no because uh, you are that capable enough. So I think that is very important. And uh, how can male colleagues help towards equality? I think uh, they themselves have taken some initiatives and it's not about them just making you feel uh, different and not capable enough. Because if you work, if you collaborate well, if there is good networking, uh, it's all going to build up. It's small steps and nothing is going to change uh, immediately. So it's gradual and it comes with time. Yes, absolutely. And, and I must say, I mean, I don't even know if it's right to say this, but there are <laughs> um, probably you are a bit young at the moment to think of things like uh, maternity leave, for example, or time with your kids. Or So this is really your opportunity to push as hard as you can before you get to that stage. But if you are in a company like the ones we are speaking about, then this would not even be a barrier. And I'm sure in future we will be able to focus on these issues as we would be able to see advantages, actually. So let's benefit from advantages in terms of visas, in terms of quotas, in terms of things that can actually help females, but, but maybe not today. Um, there is a question, again, unfortunately, in Pakistan, female civil engineers are just bound to design phase, or we can say that they're only bound to office work. We haven't given any opportunity on the field. There are many internships available, but not at the construction side because of the concept made that female can't work on field. And this is the perception that we spoke about uh, earlier. And, and I can relate to that because in construction management, uh, I have to say this is an issue. So I would invite this person to maybe the next workshop, which will focus on construction uh, in particular. But yes, uh, I think we always have to distinguish between consultancy and construction. So working on site, which is a different setup that maybe in future we will be focusing on what can be done. But uh, I note that this person is saying in Pakistan, and I have to say that I... I'm aware of a time in the UAE when women were not even allowed to come on site. And it's not a very long time ago. They, had, they needed a special permission, but this is no longer the case. Uh, and, and, and Lindsay, you would recall someone telling us in the webinar, maybe in March, that uh, a contractor was saying it would be great to have uh, more female students coming on site and becoming familiar with it. So yes, connect with the university. And I think we will need to identify these companies and, and bring them to the uh, fore. Uh, I think it's right on time. So uh, sadly, I must end a fantastic discussion. Uh, and I would like to, of course, thank all our panelists for their contribution. Thank you so much. Uh, I would like to thank our audience as well for joining us. And I hope you have found it useful. And I hope I will see everybody uh, in the future to complete our discussion. Thank you so much, Lindsay. 
for all uh, what you have um, contributed and for the interesting uh, skills and uh, women empowerment pieces, which I am sure have inspired students and made them think further about uh, their career. Uh, thank you so much all and thanks Elaine for organizing everything and I'll say good night to everyone and best of luck. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank bye. you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks a lot. Bye. Thank you. Bye.